Blog Talk Radio. Praise God. Welcome to My Gospel Soul with Pastor Janice Jackson. Today we will be talking about coming out of people pleasing and how do you know when you are under that type of situation. I'd like to thank everyone who's tuning in. Uh, this is my first show and I just look forward to, to uh, hearing your calls on this subject matter. First, I'd like to introduce myself. I am a 32-year-old pastor. I've been in ministry for uh, since 2004, uh, doing street crusades, uh, health fairs, anything that God leads me to do. But my main objective is to set the captives free. What do I mean by that? I mean, uh, if you're caught up in different things, when, it's when your life is out in someone else's hands, you're out of control. You know, you need to get back in control. So the way you do that is you give your life to God, the one who gave it to you. When you give it back to God, he takes control. So if you have any kind, even if you have a story, if you have a, a an experience with this type of thing, people pleasing, having a problem saying no, you know, the feeling that comes over you when somebody asks you something, you know, and you know that you don't have the time to do it, you know that you don't have the desire to do it, but you still say yes anyway, call in. Maybe your story can help someone get set free from this type of control. Now, first of all, I want to I wanna talk about how do you know when you are under this type of manipulation, because that's what it is. It's manipulation. Oh, well, we have a caller. Let's see who this is calling in today. Hello. Hi, caller. You on there? Hello, caller. You on there? Can you can you hear me now, Pastor Jackson? Yes, I can. Yes, I was calling in. First of all, uh, let's give all praises and honor to the Lord of the Lord as who strengthened us. Uh, my, name, you... my name is Ron Jackson, and uh, I was calling in to get some insight on some things about people pleasing 
and you like, like you say as if you are under some type of spell where you can't say uh, no or uh, yes when you really mean no and no when you really mean yes. And sometimes you get caught up because you don't want to hurt no one else's feelings. So I'd like to get uh, some insight from you on how can I uh, elude some of these type of things. Well, first of all, you have to understand that in God there is no fear in God. You know, and when you're saying when you're saying yes, when you really mean no, that's lying. <laughs> you know, that's just bottom line. That's lying. So you have to you have to ask God for strength. Well, but you know what I. I think about also, too, when you're talking about your relationships with people. You, it, it, when you're in relationship with people and they begin to, they know that you have a place in your heart for them, sometimes you, they know you're going to say yes. You have to pray about that relationship, too, because that, too, is a form of manipulation. Manipulation plays a big part in people pleasing. But like I said, when you pray, Give the relationship over to God. God will work that thing out and give you the strength to be able to say no. Because you'll look up one day and your life is so out of control and you don't know how you got there. You got there because you didn't stop some of the madness that was going on around you. Let me take another caller. You hold on the line for me. Caller, you on the air? Caller, you on the air? Caller, you on the air? Well, we waited for that caller to come on. I, they must be having some problems coming on, but call back again and we'll pick you up. But anyway, as I was saying, you know, we have to get ourselves, we have to stop getting ourselves in positions where it's, yeah, sometimes we get ourselves in positions where we can't say no. You know, before we know it, we just say, yes, okay, I'll do it. And then we look at our schedule and we really don't have the time to do it. But you have gave your word, so you have to do it. Now, going deeper into this people-pleasing thing, what is manipulation? What is it? According to the word of God, it is witchcraft and it's control. Anytime somebody, God does not force our will. He does not use things to persuade us to do. He does not do that. God does not work in that. And, and in a, a lot of times, even in, we have our caller calling back in. Go ahead, caller, you're on the air. I must have lost you. This is Mr. Jackson once again. <laughs> Thank you for calling back in. Now, did you want to say some? Uh, did you have a comment? Uh, from the, uh, Oh, yes. Uh, you know, I used to uh, myself tell people yes when I really want to say no but not to hurt their feelings. But after after all said and done, uh, it's just like they had to use you for what, they, uh, for what they wanted you to do and then just slam the door in your face without even saying thank you. Well, you know, you have to count. First of all, okay, on the on the end of that, you have to understand that whatever you do, God is going to bless you for doing. But you also, in the same respect, you also have to tell them the truth. I I cannot do that for you. Let me check my calendar. Let me see if I'm available. Those kind of kind of things. See, God will provide a way of escape for us. Hold on, I have another caller. Call you on the air. Good evening, Pastor Jackson. Good evening. How you doing? Fine. Can you introduce yourself to to the listeners? Hi, I'm Sister Patricia Williams, and right, uh, you. I'm enjoying the show very much. And on your topic, breaking the bondage of people pleasing. You know, a lot of people are guilty into trying to, you know, please them, especially if you're a Christian or a believer. They'll tell you, well, you know, the Bible says you to be long, you ought to be long suffering, you know, mm. and that uh, Jesus, 
he he bared our sins and he was there for the people. But I I just don't believe that that's true. Now, if you not now we are supposed to be long sufferings with our brothers and sisters, but our brothers and sisters not gonna give trip us right. Right, right. Okay. And that's a, that's a, that's that's more proof when you know that that the situation that's occurring is not of God. Anytime there's any type of negative persuasion or any kind of emotion to try to sway you into something, that is what we call spiritual witch, witchcraft, because you are using you are using feelings and relation to relationship to manipulate and turn a situation the way you want it to go. Yeah. Well, you so know, you have to. Mm-hmm. I, well, I, you know, I, I totally agree with you. This is the way I feel, but you know, I really don't. I also, you know, like I say, they'll try to give trip because you're a believer, and they'll say like, you know, you're not being long suffering, you're not following the the fruits of the spirit. But you know, I remember when Jesus whipped them out the temple, those traitors, and the, what they were doing when they were desecrating the temple. He whooped them out. He turned the table over and whooped them out of there. So, you know, I, I agree with you. I just don't feel like I'm supposed to be that long suffering with you, especially if you're not a believer, you know, because uh, I think you're just trying to guilt your way into some type of uh, 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 help or whatever you may be needing at that time. But I appreciate your response. I, I really believe what you say. Mm-hmm. And then, and then again, too, you also have to remember that in the Word of God it says, "Do not give your pearls to the swine." Oh. And some people, some people know what you are capable of doing. They know what, and the first thing when they need something done, the first thing they say, "Ooh, I know who I can call," mm-hmm. or they'll say, "Ooh, this person right here owe me a favor." <laughs> oh, I did this for this person two years ago, and now I, I would. I, when I call her, she better help me because I'm gonna remind her of what I did for her. You sure right. See, and then you'll know they might not say it all right, but you'll know because a feeling will come over you. A feel, it won't be a pure. You ever did something for somebody and you felt free to do it? Yeah. You felt blessed to do it, but then yeah. you did something for somebody else, and like you said, that guilt come over you. I better yeah. do this because, you know, that that is not of God. That's a relationship that you need to place before God and ask God to work out for you because it's, some, it's something that is ungodly going on right there. You have to check your relationship. That's why I say if you, you, be, you be slow to speak and quick to listen. Why? Because if your ears are open, you can hear if God wants you that to be done. See, everything we do is a service unto God. Everything that we do is a service unto God. And when you begin to do things, I'm going to just do this, I'm going to just do this, I'm going to just do this. Before you know it, like I say, you're on a path, and you don't even understand how you got there. Mm-hmm. I woke up one morning, uh, Sister Patricia, I woke up one morning, uh, and I had been I had been in a, a bad relationship for years. I woke up one morning and I said to myself, what am I doing here? I didn't feel like I was supposed to be living in this apartment. I didn't feel like I was supposed to. You know, it just felt like I was supposed to be somewhere else. You know, and then so God took me back to the beginning of that relationship, and he said, first of all, I didn't put this relationship together. This relationship was built on manipulation anyway. This relationship was built on false love. See, God is love. And when it say he he when when God giveth, he don't add sorrow with it. Yeah. When he get it, when he do a thing, it ain't gonna be no no little isms and schisms behind it after you do it. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. on the other end, the person who's manipulating that if they are saved or in the in the say it all in the world. If they don't let your good be evil spoken of. Mm-hmm. You know you tell them the truth. Mm-hmm. Yes, Lord. But I, you know what? People would do that, and I'm sure glad you're speaking on that because we as believers, we need to know. That's just like people panhandling on the street. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I used to feel sorry for them all the time. Everybody I saw on the corner, I was giving, you know, at least enough money to buy a hamburger, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But 
I saw on 2021 time where panhandlers were making like $1,700 a day. Panhandlers. Yes, ma'am. So, yes, ma'am. I appreciate you, Pastor Jackson. I thank you for for this blog. This is wonderful, you know. This is really wonderful. Yes, and I you answering my question. Amen. You're welcome. And uh, I want you to know that uh, whenever you see us on there, call that number. Call in. We'd love to hear from you, even if it's just a shout out. I sure will. Well, you got a shout out. I'm so All right happy. now. <laughs> okay. Be blessed. <laughs> you too. <laughs> I'm going to keep listening. Okay. All righty. Well, again, you know, it's just like it's just like Sister Patricia said, you know, we get so caught up in so many different situations because we 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 feel that guilt come over us. That is not of God. That is not of God. He said, whom the Son set free is free indeed. We still have Brother Jackson on the phone, and uh, uh, he was talking about that too, you know. It, sometimes you, you, you want to say yes, you know. You want to say yes, you don't desire to. You know you don't really want to do it, but you want to say yes just because of the relationship. You know, uh, Brother Jackson, you want to talk a little bit more on that? Uh, yes, I would like to uh, comment on what uh, Mr. Pat asked about Sam Hammer on the, on the corner. You know, as a, as a professional, I was a professional truck driver before I took an eel. And uh, I have pulled up on this corner of Bel Air 59. This gentleman was out there saying he was hungry and uh, uh, this and that. He, uh, if any little bit of help, uh, uh, he appreciated it. So I pulled up in my truck and uh, stopped traffic and rolled my window down. My wife had made me a lovely lunch, but uh, I didn't eat all of it because I was full and I passed it on to him. So uh, after uh, I uh, gave him the, the 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 sandwiches, and plus I gave him a, a soda also. I look in my mirror. He takes my uh, my food and he throws it away. Mm. And uh, I, uh, you know, I was saying now, you know, I was giving him this, this out of uh, gesture, you know, to. Uh, Helped him with his sign was saying he was hungry and he and he, and, and he didn't have no money and, and I'm I'm willing to share my lunch with you and this way uh uh you uh show your appreciation to me so uh I really couldn't understand that but I was just saying to myself may God bless him and whatever his uh, uh, uh deal with uh. Hope he uh, finds some peace within himself. But uh, I really made it my business to turn my truck around and come back and, and let him know that I seen what he had done with my uh, <laughs> my, uh, my lunch, and uh, he looked at me as if I was a ghost. But I pulled on up without no confrontation. But I just had to let him know that uh, I did not appreciate what that you just did. That's a key thing too. That's a key thing. When you have realized now we talking about now now he's talking about a perfect stranger. Now we won't even do that with people that we know personally. We won't go back to them after we realize that they have used us. You ever gave so somebody asked you for something and you bring it to them and they figured it wasn't good enough and the next thing you know they didn't gave it away or put it in the trash and you you walk in there as though you didn't see what they had done? But just like he went back to that stranger, see, you have to make people responsible for their own actions. It's kind of like you, you, because you begin to carry that thing. After they did it, you begin to carry it because you got that anger on the inside of you. But you have to get that energy back to who, who gave it off in the first place. Let me go back to you and let me tell you exactly how I felt about it. Say it in a Christian way, glory be to God. But you need to say, you need to be able to say that. And, and that will check your relationship again with that person. Why am I not able to tell you the truth about how I feel? That right there will help you check your, help you check your relationship. Amen. So let's, let's, 
I mean, we got 10 more minutes remaining, amen. If there is anybody else who want to call in, we still got Sister Pat on there. If Sister Pat want to go ahead and say something else on this matter, because, I mean, it's a lot of people in relationships today, marriages, uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, uh, living with a uh, parent that will not say the truth. They will not tell the truth. They make themselves into a liar to spare somebody else's feelings. And you are so right about that, Pastor Jackson. You know, uh, we're trying to spare somebody's feelings, but when we we really should be telling them the truth, because the Bible says, that "Know the truth, and the truth shall make you free." You know, yeah. if we tell them the truth, we'll we'll free them up from that, because that's yeah. a spirit, a spirit of, of 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 condemnation, trying to make somebody feel guilty into helping them. You know, when Jesus, God say he'll supply all our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You know, Amen. I just, I, I thank God for you in this blog because the people need to hear this. They need to know this. You never know who's out there surfing and come up on your blog and your word has helped them today. And but just like Brother Jackson say, you know, they tell that lie about they, you know, want something, they hungry. That's just a, a, a come on to get your money. But, you Amen. Know, I appreciate you in this blog and, and hearing the word of God because they say that's how faith comes, by hearing and by hearing and by hearing. You know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. you got to keep hearing it. So Amen. it is just will grow inside of it. So, Amen. Amen. And, and and I appreciate your call. And before we uh, release this uh, broadcast, I want you to keep in mind that, and just think about this. Okay, we're talking about regular relationships. Think about your relationship with God. I want everybody that's listening, think about your relationship with God. Are you panhandling God? <laughs> Are you panhandling God? Are you coming into God's house with your cup, shaking your cup? You know when you get out the door, you're going to throw his word to the side. Mm -hmm. Are you panhandling God? And when we and look for this show because I'm a, I'm going to do a show called Are You Panhandling God? And I want you to call in and I want you to give your comment. People over the air need to hear about this is This is something that is sweeping the church. People joining church, people coming into churches for what they can get out of church, not what they can put in. Jesus gave it all on the cross. Now, can we at least assemble ourselves and give back to him? Well, Brother Jackson, I'd like to say this before uh, you leave the air. It's a, it's a wonderful thing to where you can call Pastor Jackson and vent your frustrations or your emotions or your uh, letdowns, whereas someone could just be an encouraging word from a pastor that's truly on fire for God, and even like uh, uh, Sister uh, Patricia, uh, that you can hear a, a word of encouragement in your lowest, lowest state and be able to get, pick yourself up and stand on the word of God, whereas God, uh, uh, he's for everybody. God is not colorblind. So if anyone out here hears the voices of uh, Sister Pat and Brother Jackson and uh, Pastor uh, Jackson, feel free at any time to call and express yourself. So I, you might be able to give me something that I could use uh, uh, in my times of weariness because, uh, like I say, uh, I come from a uh, tremendous battle of almost uh, uh, passing on, but the Lord... Uh, Touch me with the uh, words of encouragement and uh, new covenant prayers. The whereas uh, I'm back on on my feet again. I'm te- I'm a little slow, but by the grace of God, I'm one happy man. So I'm uh I'm gonna say uh Pastor Jackson uh, uh is uh, I have enjoyed myself on your show and I know you're winding down time and about to go and you will have some last words to say and uh. May God bless you, Pastor Jack. Praise God. God bless you, too. Um, I also want to give a shout-out. I want to let you know that I am in Houston, Texas. My overseer and pastor is Pastor Ricky Gidry of New Covenant Fellowship Church, 45 
15 or 13, 4513, 4513, Keaton Street, glory to God, Houston, Texas, 77051. I, I have to give my pastor a shout-out because he's one that pours into my spirit. And I thank God, amen, I believe that uh, next week, when uh, look for me for next week, I believe he'll be on the air. And uh, I just want to thank you all, and I'm going to play my latest song, which is called uh, Don't Rush. Well, praise the Lord. We're getting ready to uh, close out. we got three minutes left. I want to let everybody know that I appreciate them for uh, tuning in. I look forward to seeing you next time. Be blessed. And remember that it's about your gospel soul.